To the war in Ukraine now, and President Volodymyr Zelensky has sacked the commander of Ukraine's air force. It comes after an F-16 plane was destroyed during a Russian bombardment four days ago. Our security and defence analyst, Professor Michael Clark, joins me now in the studio. And, uh, Michael, what do we know about this dismissal? And what does it also tell us about the situation with the F-16s that Ukraine was given? Yeah, I mean, the dismissal is... I mean, presidents can dismiss uh, generals, and this was uh, General Ozchuk. Uh, and Oleschuk is the head of the Air Force. Um, he might have been dismissed for other reasons or for some underperformance of the Air Force, we're not sure. Um, but undoubtedly, the downing of this F-16 was not good news. Now, it didn't occur because of Russian action. We're pretty sure it was an accident. Some said that, actually, it was um, pilot error. Then mm -hmm. it was said, well, more likely to be friendly fire, which would be a worry in either case if it was. But that's Oleschuk, so he's now gone. And there's the F-16. I mean, a lot of, of, of propaganda is heaped onto this. The F-16 is an air superiority fighter, and it was doing its job because it was shooting down cruise missiles and drones, which is exactly what it's designed to do. It's a very powerful fighter. But the, the um, uh, Ukrainians have only got maybe a dozen of them at the very most, maybe fewer than that. There are only about six pilots trained on it at the moment. There are 2,000 of these things flying around in the world in 25, 26 different countries. The Ukrainians have got maybe a, a handful. And until they get a lot more, it won't make a great difference. So there's a degree of politics be behind using this at all. But undoubtedly, it's not good news if one goes down for some sort of accidental reasons and they lose the pilot, Moonfish, uh, General Me uh, G Lieutenant uh, Colonel Mez, who was a good, trained pilot, they've lost him as well. Mm. Uh, let's uh, move from the air down onto the ground, Michael. What's the latest on the, on the front lines? Because, of course, there's more than one. Yeah, um, this uh, you know, great sort of um, seesaw, as I call it, in Kursk, that little pocket up there, the Ukrainians have still done very well, but the Battle of Kursk is now joined. The Russians have brought in forces from many other areas mm. and there's pretty heavy fighting going all the way around the pocket now, but the Ukrainians are certainly digging in, they're holding their ground, they're taking some more ground. The Russians aren't being able to snuff that pocket out at the moment. But 300 miles away, this is where the Ukrainians, I'm sure, must have hoped for some relief. The Russians are absolutely determined that they're going to try to get Chazivyar, which is the high ground, and that they're going to take Pokrovsk, mm -hmm. which is the sort of transport hub with routes going northwards and westwards, which the Ukrainians have used as an important logistical base. And if the Russians can take Chazivyar and Pokrovsk and they, and they will not withdraw any forces from here, any significant forces, to go up to um, Kursk, if they take those two places, then it gives them a sort of jumping-off point for probably a big offensive in the spring, after the winter, to take the rest of the Donbass. I'm sure they won't be able to take the rest of the Donbass before the winter, mm -hmm. unless the Ukrainians really crack, and I don't think they will, but they're going for Kramatorsk. If they get Kramatorsk, they effectively get the rest of the Donbass. Mm. But they probably won't be able to do that, if at all, until after the winter. How much of an issue, then, is all of this for President Zelensky right now? It's a big political problem because <clears throat> the, the offensive in Kursk was very much a Zelensky um, invention, in a way, and his chief of staff, who's Sersky, a very it's real Sersky style. So between them, they're risk takers. Mm. They believed in something audacious, something... They only started planning this, we believe, at the end of July. They mm. didn't tell anybody, they certainly didn't tell their allies. They fixed it all and they took everyone by surprise and they've got the benefits from it, the political benefits, the morale benefits, the idea of putting pressure on Putin and the Russians, they've got all of that. But if the price of that is that they are going to lose Pokrovsk and Chazivyar and give the Russians a victory in the south, then they've got problems. They're going to have to explain that because, as I keep saying, Zelensky's democratic mandate ran out in May this year. He was elected in May 2019 for five years. That mandate runs out, ran out in May, mm. so now his mandate is martial law. He's a war leader. And as a war leader, um, if you lose battles, then people wonder uh, about your legitimacy. So it, it hasn't happened yet, but if the Ukrainians find that the price they pay for Kursk is the loss of Pokrovsk and Chazivyar, then President Zelensky and his chief of staff, Sersky, will have some explaining to do. Michael, thank you.